Ghost of Tsushima is going to have a very lengthy story campaign of at least 40 to 50 hours according to the latest news and that exploration is going to be a much bigger part of the game than we initially anticipated with a ton of side content and side activities to complete to keep us busy for a very long time but very recently we found out more about those RPG elements that are going to make the game pretty much incredible and yes it's been confirmed that there is the possibility of upgrading gear there is also talks about skill points and investing skills into trees so let's discuss all of that and more in this video and as always a thumbs up on it would be super awesome let's begin with the interview with Nate Fox the creative director of Ghost of Tsushima this was of course the interview done by the website called voxel.com I believe that this is in Portuguese but we do have a translation going on over here so according to the game director it is a difficult question to answer when referring to the game's story length because the world is a large space with with several isolated side stories. We did several tests with people playing about six and a half hours a day and the results were very different. Many did not finish the main story because they were busy exploring other aspects of the game. When asked if the players could take 30, 40, 50 or more hours, if they devoted themselves to optional activities and less to the specific main story only, Fox replied, yes, absolutely. But I would highly recommend that everyone get off the main route and get lost in the island of Tsushima since there is a lot to discover there. So it seems that this confirms what we found previously in the video that we've covered today and that is the fact that that exploration is going to be a much bigger part of the game than we initially anticipated but the main story is still going to be very lengthy. At least 40 hours of gameplay according to this interview right here which actually gets me very excited. This is going to be quite a huge game. We already know that there's at least a minimum requirement of 50 gigs of space. Um, on the HDD that we're going to need in order to install it. There's also of course the question of the map size that we've discussed yesterday and even that according to a different interview with iGen Nordic um, this is actually going to be much bigger than even us initially anticipated like the map size in Ghost of Tsushima is going to be much much bigger than we initially anticipated so um, let's go over that also the combat that's very difficult and a lot of other stuff that has been hinted over here. So now in terms of the main story of course you already know a few hints about it, the fact that you're gonna start as a samurai, that the Mongol invasion happens and that you're going to have to adapt your combat style in order to um, adapt to these uh, enemies as well and take them easier, otherwise you're going to have a pretty pretty tough time in order to do that. Um, so sword is not going to be enough in order to win against these types of enemies, you are going to have to explore other possibilities as well, which brings us to that way of the ghost that has been showcased so many times and it's very likely that during the game you're going to do a mix of both of these combat styles. There's times when you're going to approach enemies as a samurai, you can also like fully complete the game as a samurai by the way it seems that even according to this interview with IGN several of the developers are actually planning to fully finish the game with just the samurai style so that is within the realm of possibility but if you truly want to be successful chances are that you're going to want to employ as many combat styles and tools that you can have which brings us to the combat apparently it is going to be difficult in fact the game's director is pointing out that it's going to be very difficult to say the least and chances are that what we've witnessed in the gameplay reveal was either a very high skill player that has played the game countless hours or the difficulty has been toned down just for that reveal. But according to the code right here we are trying to make a grounded game in that sense so a couple of blows from the enemy will be enough to kill you. We absolutely honor the lethality of the sword. We watched samurai movies and people go down with one or two strikes and that is embedded inside the combat. Beating the Mongols in battle will be hard but it is that challenge that makes it feel alive and the victory rewarding and later on he also confirmed that you won't be able to just run inside the camp and just fight like five people at the same time without getting overwhelmed and even dying so that actually makes it quite realistic though it remains to be seen if that's truly going to be the case especially towards the end game when it's very likely that we're going to have a ton of skills and a ton of techniques to take multiple enemies at the same time and kind of do it like how it was shown in the gameplay reveal when you were surrounded by three uh, three enemies at the same time yet um, th that player over there was still more than capable of taking them down and this brings us of course to that skill point system that I was hinting in the early part of the video as well as the fact that um, there seems to be the possibility of upgrading 
upgrading gear when we get into the game. So uh, as the player you get to decide how the ghost evolves and where you put your skill point. This is the first time that anybody actually hints towards skill points in the true sense of the word. So I think that that technique section over there in the pause menu was indeed the one that had to deal with the skill tree or skill trees as there might be more or uh, there might be sections that deal with different things like for example points to invest in the katana skills, points to invest in your ranged attacks with the kunai or with the bow for example and others that deal with dexterity like we saw one that had to deal with you being able to jump straight from the horse during movement and jump directly on the enemy and take them down so that could be a skill assassination that might be something that you might invest into but also what kind of armor you wear and upgrade has also been hinted so it's very customizable according to this code right here it's very likely that upgrading gear is going to be possible in the game this is what I'm taking from these hints right here so it, it kind of begs the question what does this mean in terms of actually upgrading your character so are you able to go in take gear and actually upgrade it with uh, for example forging or just adding to it or is it like more of a, uh, a stylistic upgrade where you um, get better gear as you progress through the game and those pieces of gear will provide like better stats and uh, better bonuses and whatnot. Again, it remains to be seen, but at the same time, Jin is a transient samurai and doesn't forget his skills, so he has both the samurai fighting skills while he becomes better and better as the ghost. It's not binary, you can switch between the two styles as you like throughout the game. You start with great sword skills, as a samurai of course, and that never goes away, but as you go deeper, you get the reputation and abilities as the ghost. This is basically why what we've discussed earlier in the previous video when we went over the fact that um, there isn't going to be a restriction when it comes to using either the ghost style or the samurai style. There isn't a karma system in the game that locks you in a specific path, but rather Jin has his own story. You're going to follow this through the game and on the main campaign. And as you evolve through that, you're going to have the possibility of using either his samurai arsenal or his ghost arsenal. And you can switch and use the at any given point during any given like combat scenario which actually makes things way more interesting it gives you the freedom of movement and the freedom of choice when it comes to approaching enemies and taking them down in the most efficient way another huge piece of news we have on the exploration side of course we saw that there's enemy outposts that we're gonna have to take down and you're going to have to fight the mongol invasion but there's going to be a ton more to the exploration than that and that's not going to be a main focus or anything even though it's going to be a huge focus that you're going to definitely be spending a ton of hours into but um, both exploration as well as the map size are going to be absolutely huge so what we saw in the presentation was just some side action in the game it was not part of one's particular story the map has mongolians everywhere and the main part will be Jin's transformation from being a samurai to over over time becoming the ghost next to the main story you will meet people that try to survive in the world with stories that will branch off the main one that is what the body of the game is made out of there's all sorts of hidden stories and items you get access to by following your curiosity that is why we didn't want to add markers on the map we want you to get lost in Tsushima and yeah that also brings us to the map size we were talking about and apparently the one that we saw in the state of play last week was very zoomed in with an emphasis on very according to the interview which pretty much means that it's very likely that that those 50 square kilometers that we initially calculated um, are probably going to be way off. It's very likely that the map in Ghost of Tsushima is going to be much larger than we initially anticipated. So the map we showed during the state of play was very zoomed in. That was just a little portion of the starting area. The actual map is going to be huge. And it's actually really, really awesome and refreshing that Tsushima Island is going to cover the biomes that you can also find in the mainland Japan according to the game's direct so it's very likely that even though this is going to be a realistic representation of the real world Tsushima Island um, it's probably going to contain more than just what we can find on it so biomes from the land from the mainland Japan as well um, from snowy mountains to bamboo forests to waterfalls and even rolling grasslands that we've seen so many times in the past um, even though the map is very big they have also made sure to add a ton of detail to it and not make it too boring as we've explained previously we want to give enough stuff to keep
keep it electrifying for the player. We didn't want to make a huge map and have nothing on it, so it is packed with people, items and stories to explore. So I think that with this, everything that I had in terms of concerns for Ghost of Tsushima has been put to rest. Um, this pretty much goes over all of the details that I wanted to see. Of course, it gets me very excited about the game and now that I've read all of this, I want to play it even more. So I cannot wait for the next couple of months to see more reveals and more gameplay and finally get it in July. So um, yeah, stay tuned if you want to see more Ghost of Tsushima news and gameplay. Of course, that's gonna all be covered here on this channel. So as always, if you want to see more of that and more, subscribe to this channel, activate that notification bell and I will see you guys in the next one.